In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a 31st night flyer like this for your church. And this is coming up. Hi everybody, Innocent here and welcome to the channel. Over here, we make videos like this. If that is something that sounds like you're interested, kindly consider subscribing. Inside the description of this video, we'll be a link to download all the resources that I'll be using. You might want to download them and in case you download any practice, you can send it to me on Instagram, IG, or TikTok. Now, let's get into Photoshop and let's get things done. The first thing you want to create in Photoshop is the project size. So this is going to be dependent on what you want to do. We are doing this for social media. So we press on control and to create a new project. Now you might want to use eight by eight or four by four. Either way would work, but I'm using four by four inches. You can as well go for anything like A4, A5, depending on what you want to create. After you've set your project, you go ahead and then you click on create. So we are going to establish the backgrounds. To do that, I got a couple of backgrounds from Pinterest and they look so awesome. So I just blended them to get like a, a very nice background for 31st night flyer. Let's look at some of them. The first one we want to do is we go to file and then place embedded and then you are going to pick the first one. You can see that when you download pictures from Pinterest, it gives you these long names. I don't know why it's actually like that. Let we double click on that and then it opens in our Photoshop and then we can open it to cover the entire project. So you open it from the diagonal edges so that it covers the parts that you want it to cover. We can leave this right over here. I don't like using the long names because it makes my project very long. So I can double click on the name and then give it or rename it like one. So you realize that it reduces this one. This helps when you've opened different tabs over here and you want to go back into any one of them. Now, once we're here, we right click and then we can rasterize this layer. We go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur, and then we can add a bit of blurness to it something like this should be fine we don't want it to be so hard the background to be so very hard we want it to be smooth like this and then you can go ahead and click ok now let's go and bring background number two so we go to files again and then place embedded and we can bring background number two for that i went with this background i don't know why i chose this but yes i opened that as well so you're going to open it using the very diagonal edges so in this case i wanted this part and this end and this end to be the same let me zoom in a little bit using the z so this looks fine for me now for this background we don't want the entire background over here we only need just this black part and a bit of this area okay so what we can do is let's rename this first to two or three that's three so two right over here and then we can right click rasterize and we can go to filter blur and then gaussian blur we want to make the background so smooth okay so something like this and then we can click ok and we we don't want this all this part that looks very brightening so we want to get rid of this part to do that we're going to add a layer mask to it so you choose your layer mask you choose your brush tool and then you make sure that your foreground color is black you can reduce your brush a little bit we want to get rid of the white area over here so you can left click on there so you left click one more like that okay so you see that that part is gone you can right click and reduce your brush size a little bit as well and brush off all the parts that you don't want once we're done with this we can go and bring in the next background so place embedded into the files and then we can bring this crossing over or the running type of you know this is kind of cliche but almost everyone doing crossover uses this type of pictures but of course it's delivered a message so let's let's use one over here so we are going to open it up to fit the part that we want we want to right click on it and rasterize you want to press ctrl shift and then u to desaturate this and then you can set this to a different blend mode by clicking on the blend mode and setting it to a blend mode that will match the back the colors that you're using so in this case overlay will work for me i can put that right over here somewhere around here and then i can open it up slightly now i'll go to filter and blur that as well remember we are making the background smooth something like this 8.8 .8 is fine and then i'll clear it but you realize that this part is not blending in well with the background so we need to use a layer mask to get that part too so we are going to select a layer mask, choose our brush tool, and then we can increase it a little bit like that and start brushing off the parts that we don't want. 
we have some clocks in there so let's go to file again place embedded and bring them in so we'll bring this clock over here and then open it up and then we can position it on the top right side right click and rasterize it and then you can press ctrl u shift and change the blend mode to soft light so soft light is going to be fine we're going to add a layer mask to it and then we can brush off the parts that we don't want with this one we can make one more duplicate by pressing ctrl j and then we can bring it right over here so we press ctrl t and then we will flip it horizontally okay so at this side will come you can make that one a bit smaller so transform it to make it a bit smaller and then you can decrease the opacity of this one so we are going to decrease the opacity to about 60 and you realize that this part is still showing so with that one we will select the layer mask and we are going to brush off that part one thing that you should keep in mind is that when you are blending backgrounds you don't want a part of it to be showing in the other background okay so if you see any line or anything that is coming so hard into the other backgrounds you need to use the layer mask and then you get rid of that now this is going to be an element but then it's also going to be part of the background so let's go and bring that also in so the last one that we're doing for the background is this background that i also got from pinterest so you're going to bring it in here and then we are going to set the blend mode to soft light okay so this looks very 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 high so we are going to decrease the opacity to somewhere around 55 or you can even go down some more later on we are going to add a hue and saturation to it so this is going to make sense of course we can do that now so let's go ahead to the create new fill adjustment over here and let's add hue and saturation so we can take our hue to this side a little bit we don't want the flyer to look that very reddish okay so we can take our hue here a little bit we can go to the create new fill adjustment and add a vibrance to it a little bit of vibrance so that it pops up and this is fine so once we're done with all of this we are done with our background so you can select that press ctrl g and call this the background now it's time to add the details to it let's start from the top the logo and then the church name we've been doing that here over and over again so we are not going to spend my time on it you go to file and then you are going to place in your logo so you select the church logo in this case i'm using tahila priest so you place the logo at a point that you want now you're going to add the name of the church so you pick a font and in this case we are going with our favorite poppins and then you are going to paste your text over here we are going to select all of that and change the color to white now we don't want all of it to be on the same line like that so let's bring the center down and then we can double click on the center and make sure that that one is a bit bigger so that it matches with the e at the end you go to toggle character and then we can close it up slightly or open it up so that it doesn't match up with the tehila praise okay once you get this you can press ctrl t and then you transform your test and position it nicely the background here is a little bit bright so let's right click and go to blending options and add a drop shadow to it so we choose our drop shadow and then you can increase the opacity a little bit if you want to and you play around with but this is going to be dependent on the colors that you are choosing so it's going to be fine once we're done with that we want to add the same effect to the tahila priest logo so we are going to hold alt and then drag the fx onto the tahila priest logo layer so that the shadow will affect that as well once we're done with that let's select the two press ctrl g and then group that you press ctrl a and then we can center all of it and at this point you can press ctrl t to transform the two at the same time now it's time for the main thing so i saw this vintage shield kind of thing on png wing and then i downloaded it so we are going to bring that into photoshop this is not something that i created all by myself i just got it from png wing you get it and i get this question many times that where do i get my resources from basically it's just searching 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 Sometimes you just have to have an idea of what you want and then you start searching on the internet. It's as simple as that. So we are going to transform this slightly, but you see this is very long. Okay, so let's hold shift and try to close it up a little bit. The reason why you have to hold shift is because it will help you transform it vertically. If you don't, it is going to transform the entire thing for you. So once you're done, you can release your hand from the shift and then you can now transform it from the diagonal edges and then you can have something like this you need to make it very simple and small and then you press ctrl e and 
you can center it it's time to add your test for the test i use a 3d the, the 3d in photoshop but time will not permit me to go through all of that i've made a video on that if you want to use it but let me quickly show you how you can play around with that and get something similar to what i used so the first thing you want to do is you want to pick your test tool and then you are going to type your test so this is going to be cross over now you're going to select a font that you want to use in this case i use the font called trajan pro i'll leave links in the description if you want to get that and then i made sure that it was centered and it was set to bold okay so once you have it like this you can give it another color as well let's open it up slightly you can give it any color that you want and then once you're done with that all that you need to do is you go to the layer you right click on it and then you scroll down you're going to see 3d okay so if you scroll down like that you're going to see new 3d extrusion from selected layer make sure that you are on that particular selected layer the the test layer after you get that out you're going to click on the new 3d extrusion and then it is going to open the 3d for you one thing that you need to keep in mind over here is this particular thing that you see over here once you figure that out you can double click on it it will open the properties for you and then you can play with the extrusion depth that is how far or how long you want it to go another thing that you may want to pay attention to is the shape preset over here once you go there you'll be given different type of 3d the angles that you can come from you can play around with that one as well and also you can change the color from here if you don't want the initial color that you set so you can go around with something like this in this case you realize that we are using the golden color and the background is also giving us the golden orange type of vibe so you can so you can pick something from this side maybe you get it so you can pick something around this side you go a little bit further like that and then you can click ok continue to play with your extrusion depth it is very important and once you figure out what you need just go back to your layers right click and then render the 3d give it some time to render so that you can have something nice as what i got how this quick walkthrough would guide you if you have any questions i'll leave a link to full step-by-step -step tutorial that I, I did on how to create a 3d test in the description so let's quickly go and bring the one that I got into Photoshop so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this one go to file place embedded and after I did mine I just saved it as a PNG that's why I would have something like this okay so you realize that I went with a color as smooth as this something very simple and once you get something like that you can position it in the middle and then you are good to go and then on top of that you are going to add a normal test that is 31st so we choose our test tool and on top of that you are going to type the 31st okay for this test we are going to use a font called agency fb i'll leave link to download that also in the description so you go into your font and then you select agency fb link to download it will be in the description you might decide to keep it at bold or light i think the light looks fine the bold is too bold what am i even saying all right so at this point we are going to try to transform it slightly you press ctrl t and then you can transform it make sure it is also centered now we're going to add a gradient overlay to this so you're going to right click on your let first layer and then you go to blending options and then gradients so once you're here you choose your gradient and then you can choose any gradient that you want to use in this case we use this gradient but you can use any one of them or any one of your choice okay so this is the hex code if you want to use the same thing but the other side is a bit white so you can use that once you're done with this you can click ok and then you can play around with the angle so if the angle looks good for you you can keep it like that but else you can play around with it to get the better angle that you want after we're done with that you go ahead and then you click ok now we're going to make a duplicate of the 31st so ctrl j to duplicate that and then we can drag it down here we are going to edit that test to service so 31st cross over service okay we are using the same font and then we will type the service after that we are going to select that go to the toggle character and then we can open the tracking so that it space out a little bit and now you just need to take your time to space this out so you bring this down a little bit and then you can bring your crossover also a little bit so that there will be space in between the test 
and just like that you've created a very nice shielded 31st crossover service now we can select from the crossover the test to the service and then we press ctrl g to group that oh let's add the shield to it so you can drag the shield up onto it as well and then it will be part of the group you can rename this as main now the next thing we want to do is we want to add a theme to it so we are going to put that right over here so we go on top of our main we are going to choose our test tool and then we are going to choose a different font actually the same font that we use for the heading so let's select that is the poppins we can then left click at any part and then we are going to type our test over there so that is going to be our theme okay we can select all of that we don't want to use the regular we want to use something a bit bold so medium will be fine and then you can decrease the font size by dragging this to the left side slightly like that i want to make this left aligned because we are going to do something very quick over here before that let me quickly bring the theme over here so that it reads theme divine providence now right at the back here where the scripture starts we want to bring that onto the next line so we place our cursor over here and then hit enter and as if that is not enough we are going to tap the tap key a couple of times until it gets to this side so let's keep tapping this is fine before we proceed let me just press ctrl t and transform it okay so let me select all of that and keep the leading at say 10 okay that is so let's go to about 14. now you see this piece over here let's utilize it okay so let's go for our rectangle tool and then we are going to create a very simple nice rectangle something like that and then you can right click on the rectangle go to the blending options and we are going to add a gradient overlay so the same gradient overlay that we added to this we select our gradient overlay and then you realize that it automatically applies to it because we've already added it previously and once you get that you click on ok and then okay so that part is going to be where we are going to write scripture and the scripture is this one you get it so we select our test to hold out and then left click on the rectangle and then you can put in scripture over there afterwards we will select all of that go to color overlay over here and we are going to pick a color from this side so something a bit darker you click okay and then okay from here and then you can press ctrl t to transform that so we are going to make it small so that it fits into the rectangle that we just created okay now we go to our toggle character and we are going to open the tracking a little bit so that it's kind of take a bit of the space more of the space so after you're done with these three you can select the three over here press ctrl g to group that and then you can call that the theme and you realize that it doesn't have to be here okay so you press ctrl a and then you can center it nicely like that if it feels big for you you can still press ctrl t and then transform it nicely like that it just has to be centered anytime you make the transformation underneath of that you're going to put our date and then our venue to create a date and location we are going to choose our rectangle tool and create a very simple rectangle right underneath here you press ctrl a and then make sure that it is centered and then we are going to apply the same gradient that we used here onto that one so a quick way to do that is you go into that gradient hold alt and then drag the fx onto this new rectangle that you created and you see that automatically it just applies it onto that as well let's still bring our rectangle a little bit down here now let's zoom in now we are going to put our date so we hold shift so that we can type on this one now let's select all of that go to the toggle character and then we can close it up slightly and now we can press ctrl t and transform this out you can then make a duplicate by pressing ctrl j and drag it to this side and then you can replace that with your location so for our location or venue we are going to paste this one right over here so we can select the ones on the next line so we can decrease this font and then we can decrease the ones up a little bit also so we can put it around 8.5 or let's go 8 oh, okay so actually this location is the one that has joined this okay so let's make it location so let's make this also eight hit enter and now we can select the ones at the top and make it say seven okay so that the location also will be here to separate this we are going to add one more rectangle so you select your rectangle tool and then you can create a very simple 
rectangle make sure that it is having the colors that you are using over here the coffee brown color if it doesn't come automatically like it's black over here you can double click on the layer thumbnail over here and then you can choose the coffee brown color that you are using for the test okay and now you can click on okay now let's reposition this right over here and let's try to close it up slightly like that okay now you can select from the rectangle to sunday over here group that and that is going to be our date and location now it's time to add the time so for the time we are going to put it at the very edge over here so let's go back to our main press ctrl t ctrl t to transform it so that we can close it up slightly so that we have space for that okay and then don't forget to always center it once you make any adjustment right so on top of that what we're going to do is we are going to select our ellipse which is also known as the circle you hold shift to make a perfect circle like this you can make it a little bit bigger press ctrl a and then you can center it we want this gradient we want to apply the same gradient over here onto that as well we already have our rectangle over here so we hold alt and then drag the fx onto it we are going to make one more duplicate by pressing ctrl j so the one underneath of it we are going to press ctrl t to transform it make it a bit bigger you can then right click and clear the layer style so we don't want that layer style on it and then we can change the color to say white or black either way that works for you okay or you can even use the coffee color over here or the coffee black color okay so you have this you press ctrl a and then you can center it and then bring it down slightly also so something like this is fine and now you can decrease the opacity to about 50 percent you just have to hit on 50 or let's go down a bit 40 percent should be fine and now we can go on top of the first ellipse that we created or the copied one and then put in the time so anytime you are writing in shape don't forget to add the shift to it now it's time to add some flare to it so we are going to add it on top of the main so let's go and select our main over here let's open the the group on top of the first layer in the group you are going to place a flare on it so we go to files and then place embedded and then we can add our lens flare so we bring it right over here and the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the blend mode and set this to screen okay so that it brightens and now you can go to filter blur and then gaussian blur and then you can blur it up a little bit okay so don't forget that sometimes the more you blur it the shinier it becomes okay but then don't also make it over blurry okay uh, once you're done with that you can press ctrl t transform it and then you decide on where to position it so for my case i wanted to position it right over here let's make it a little bit bigger so that it shines some more and now let's drag it over here now if this feels too high for you you can still go back to the blur gaussian blur and then you blur it some more it doesn't have to be or it doesn't have to look that solid okay so it has to look something like that something like this should be fine and then you can click ok now the last thing we want to do is we want to go to the background so let's go back to our background let's open that and right on top of that we are going to add some curves to this so you select your curves and then you are going to drag your curves a little bit down so that it creates some sort of shadow or darkness at the background over here and don't forget that we added a hue and saturation over here in case you want to change the color to any color at all you can just play around with your hue and saturation over here what do you think so you can change to as many colors as you want but in this case we want to go back to this one and yeah just like that you create a very nice simple 31st crossover service that you can use for your church or you can design for your church don't forget that resources and fonts will be in the description in case you want to download that and practice and i hope this video was helpful if it was a subscribe to the channel will be so very much appreciated thank you very much for sticking around to watch this video i wish you a very merry christmas and a prosperous new year and I hope that the new year is going to come with a lot of goodies in it thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you guys in the next video it's innocent here and bye